Um, I believe this was from uh, last week. We kind of ended the show with something like this, but this is another way from uh, Susie. I, I paraphrase your question, Susie. I don't have all of it, room for all of it, but this is what it says. When it looks like evil is prevailing, a.k.a. Newsom Recall, how do we find a balance between working hard for righteousness and having hope for our country and shrugging our shoulders and just letting it happen since we know what's coming in these last days? Uh, she says, feeling a little discouraged. And then she says, thanks, man, Steve. Blessings. What do you tell Susie and well, the rest of the people that feel like her? Yeah. Um, one, of, one of the things that, that Jesus said in the parable of the minas, uh, you remember that. Can you look look up the chapter on that for yeah. me? Jesus talked about the um, uh, uh, king that uh, goes on a far journey and he leaves the guys in, in charge of, uh, actually it's a businessman, he leaves uh, guys in charge of uh, his issues and um, he commits to them a, a certain amount of money. And one of the things that Jesus said at the end of that passage was that we need to be doing business until he comes. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Is that the one? No, that's the parable of the talents. I want parable of the minas. M-I-N-A-S. Luke 19. That was close. 12 or 11 and following. Yeah. So this, this is the parable. Um, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 minas, and said to them, to them, do business till I come. Uh, but his citizens hated him, sent a delegation after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that he, when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities." And the second came saying, Master, your mina has earned five. Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. Then another came saying, Master, here's your mina, which I've kept put away in a handkerchief. Uh, for I feared you because you were an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, you wicked servant. Uh, you knew that I was an austere man collecting what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? that at my, at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him, give it to him who has ten minas. But they said, Master, he has ten minas. For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given, from, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. And um, obviously, this is a reference to the second coming of Christ and the fact that he has left us um, in charge of the things that he's given us as, as believers. And one of, the, one of the passages that's important is in, in, in verse 13, he gives them these goods and then he says, do business till I come. And so the fact that business wasn't going well doesn't mean that they weren't to be doing business. It's do business till I come, not do business... Uh, un unless you're discouraged or do business unless business isn't going well. It's do business till I come. And that's, that's how I um, handle this stuff. Uh, you know, uh, you guys, I, I don't expect to succeed uh, as a Christian. It, it, it depends on the world that I live in. So Jeremiah was a follower of God and he ministered for over 40 years, probably about 41 years. And he had maybe one convert maybe one in the whole time. The people of Jerusalem, the people of Judea refused to listen to anything that Jeremiah had to say. The kings put him in jail. Uh, they burnt up his, uh, his uh, prophecies. Um, they were antagonistic towards him the whole time that he was ministering. And yet he did, did exactly what God called him to. Um, he got discouraged. There was one point where he decided he wasn't going to say anything anymore to anybody. And then what he said was that God's word burnt in his heart until he couldn't do anything but speak uh, the things that God had told him. And so Jeremiah was a faithful prophet of God. He was a faithful minister of God, even though he didn't have the success. He, he never succeeded in anything that he wanted the people of Judah to do, even after his prophecies came to pass. 
uh, the, uh, the prophecies about uh, Judea and Jerusalem came to pass, and there were people who were left uh, in that area, and God, through Jeremiah, told them, if you stay in the land, I'll bless you. And they, you know, before Jeremiah uh, prophesied to him, they go, ask what the Lord says. We'll do whatever he says. Jeremiah goes and asks the Lord. The Lord says, tell him to stay here. And they go, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. And so they ran down to Egypt. And so not, even after all his prophecies came to pass, these people are disobeying and doing exactly the opposite of what he says. But Jeremiah was faithful to do business until the end of his life. And then he went before the Lord and he got a reward, not for success, but for obedience to the command that God had given him. And so that's, that's how I always do this. There are times when I'm witnessing to somebody, I really want them to get saved and they don't get saved. And, you know, I'm kind of bummed out. And when I was a younger Christian, I was like, what's wrong with me? What's, what's happening? And, you know, why, 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 you know, is, is there some flaw in me that I can't share the gospel in a way that, you know, this person can come to the Lord. And over, uh, over some time in reading my Bible, I realized it's not my job to save people. It's my job to give them an opportunity. And then they get to make the choice on that whole thing. And as long as I'm giving them the opportunity, praying about it and asking God to fill me with the Holy Spirit uh, as I'm doing it, then I, I've, got, I've got nothing, no responsibility there except for opening my mouth and, and sharing with them. Well, it's the same thing with, you know, the world that's around us. I, like the, I would like the world to be, you know, radically different. And I, you know, I, I, can, I can see why God judges nations. And I'm, I'm seeing it uh, more clearly as time goes on. I can see why God wants to judge this nation, and he's going to. And um, so there's a balance with me. You know, I, I, can't, I can't change national politics, but I can share the gospel with a, with a person who's close to me and change that person's heart. I uh, heard a story about, uh, um, gosh, I, um, I, actually, I think this was uh, a story uh, that came from Augustine. Um, in any case, he's walking along the beach, and uh, he sees a, a guy picking up. There had been a storm, and there were all these um, starfish uh, sitting on the beach. And obviously, they're out in the sun. They're going to die. And there's just tons of them, just millions of, of them as far as you can see. And so this guy's walking down the beach, and every time he sees a starfish, he lean, uh, stoops down, picks it up, and throws it in the ocean. And walks along a little further, stoops down, picks another starfish up, and throws it in the ocean. And a man comes up to him and says, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm saving starfish. And he goes, what makes you, th you're saving the starfish, you're never going to be able to uh, you know, get all these starfish back into the ocean. What difference is it going to make? And he stoops down, picks up another starfish, throws it in the ocean, and goes, made a difference to that one. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the deal. You know, when, when I look at what I'm doing as a Christian, um, I'm not responsible for my nation in the sense of changing the course of the nation. I am responsible for sharing the gospel with as many people as I can around me and uh, being effective to do that. So I keep, my, I keep my eyes on that. And I'm not even responsible to get them saved. I'm responsible to share the gospel with them, to uh, show them who Jesus is. And if I've done that, then I'm, I'm doing the business that Jesus calls me to. And uh, I've got nothing to be ashamed of. I also um, keep in mind that the world's got to go in a certain direction. It has to go, th uh, to, the, it has to, go to a place where there's an absolute tyranny and people are okay with it. Yep. In fact, they're worshiping the tyrant. Yep. That's where the world's got to go. That's what the Bible says is going to happen with the Antichrist. He's going to be an absolute tyrant, and people are going to worship him as God. And so the fact that I see people moving in that direction right now um, is discouraging to me because I love my country, but it's encouraging to me in the sense that I can see that uh, the, the time for the end is pretty quick here, and that means the Lord's coming back for me. And so, you know, I, I just want to be busy. I want to be about the word, Lord's work until I come. And so that's, that's where I keep my eyes. Um, it, it's really helped me in my ministry. Um, it can be a scary thing um, when uh, you're, you're a pastor of a small church and you know that you're supposed to be sharing the gospel and giving people opportunities, but you know every person in the crowd. And so... Given a, giving a, um, 
an altar call at that time or an opportunity to receive Christ at that time can be a scary thing because you look like a failure if you do and nobody raises their hand or nobody stands up or nobody comes forward. And then, you know, you know, sometimes you have the pity salvations where somebody comes forward and you go, oh, you know, you never gave your life to, oh, well, I just wanted to come forward because I wanted to encourage you. <laughs> what are you doing? Get out of here! <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that, that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, um, what I realized was it's not my job to save people. It's just, it's just my job to give them an opportunity. And if they don't want to take it, that's okay. They don't have to. And um, I don't. I don't need to be discouraged by that. So, I think we just said answers the question too. A lot of people. Um, well, for instance, if you look at the Jeremiah Maya story, that's tough, man. Yeah. Like you have to have some mental gall to go through your whole life, yeah. and nobody gets saved. That like guy, that guy had a spine. Man, that's that's rough. And so yeah. the issue of hey, I'm just going to move states. Uh, for instance, I went to Idaho last week and had a wedding. It was so nice. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I cross the border and me and my wife look up. It's because COVID doesn't know about Idaho. Yeah, it doesn't. It, <laughs> when you cross the border, there, it doesn't go there. But uh, I, we're looking around. We look at each other. We look out. People are walking in groups. They're holding hands. It's just a different vibe, right? And so, uh, and then when I was over there, I posted a picture and someone who had moved over there is like, hey. Welcome to Idaho. When are you coming over? You know, and, uh, I've had friends move to Oklahoma and Texas and South Carolina and stuff. But when I look at that, it's like, hey, when are you coming? It's like, you know what? I it's whatever the Lord wants. If he if the Lord wants me in Washington, he called me to Calvary Chapel for whatever reason. Like this is where he has me, and it doesn't matter how bad it gets or or, or whatever. It's if I, listen, I would love for him to call me to Texas or Hawaii, right? Yeah. But this is what he has for me. Not Hawaii. You yeah. want to go to Hawaii? Well. Uh, I say that for the scenery, not for the politics. <laughs> right, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we know how that is. But uh, that's the answer to that question, you yeah. know, is, hey, should I stay in wa A lot of people are wrestling with this. Should I stay? Uh, I'm just going to move states. And it really comes down to, you know, where does the Lord want you? Yeah. Because it's not going to go well for you. If you do move and, you know, like you told Jeremiah, stay here and do this, it's not going to go well if you don't actually stay there and yeah. go through it. So. And so I can't move. So I'm stuck here. You're stuck, man. So I'm gonna make the best of a uh, of the situation. Got I got I I'm having fun actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you have a little rebellious attitude, uh -huh. like these are good times, man. Yeah. We're having a blast yeah. here at Calvary. <laughs>